In this video, we're going to be looking at interest rates, saving, borrowing, spending, and investment. To elaborate, we're going to start off by looking at what's meant by an interest rate, and then we'll proceed to look at some of the factors that influence the different rates of interest. We'll then look at how changes in interest rates affect consumers' decisions to save, borrow, spend, or invest. We'll finally look at some mathematical calculations calculating interest on savings. The main definition of an interest rate is that it is the percentage charged on the total amount borrowed or saved. For example, if you take out a £100 loan at a 5% annual interest rate, then you would have to pay the lender an additional 5% in interest payments. In this example, that equates to £5. That may not seem like much, but in the context of mortgages or larger loans in general, even small changes in interest rates can mean a lot. Take this example from the Bank of England. Imagine you have a £130,000 mortgage that you want to pay off over 25 years. This is what happens to your monthly repayments on that mortgage given different interest rates. If the interest rate on your mortgage is 2.5%, then you'll end up paying £583 a month. However, if the interest rate goes down by 1%, then your monthly repayments go down to £520. However, if your interest rates go up, by 1%, then the monthly repayments skyrocket to £651. From this, we can see that even small changes, 1% up or down, in the interest rate can have quite significant effects on the costs of borrowing or the benefits of saving. And by extension, we can see how even small changes in the interest rate can have quite significant effects on consumer spending and business investment. But what exactly happens to consumer spending and business investment when interest rates change? Well, to answer that, let's look at what happens when interest rates rise. If interest rates rise, then repayments on variable rate mortgages will increase. The rate hike will also make interest payments on credit cards and loans more expensive. And both of these reduce the disposable income available to consumers to spend elsewhere in the real economy, such as in local shops or online retailers. Also, higher interest rates could mean higher returns on savings, incentivizing consumers to keep their funds in the bank rather than spending them. All of this will reduce the level of consumer spending in the economy. Similarly, changes in interest rates affect producers. Higher interest rates, for example, increase the interest rate payments on loans firms take out to fund new investment projects, such as new research and development programs to create new product lines. The increased costs incurred due to this may make some projects unprofitable. Higher interest rates also increase the incentive to save, leading many firms to save in the short term in the aim of saving in the long term to be able to invest in bigger and better investment projects. Firms don't carry out these projects in the short term as a result, leading to lower business investment. It goes without saying that the opposite to all of this is true if interest rates were lowered. So we've looked at the effects of changes in interest rates on consumers and producers, but you might be wondering what causes interest rates to change in the first place. Well, there are five main reasons. Supply of loanable funds, demand for loanable funds, deficit spending, inflation, and central bank intervention. And we'll be going through each of these in turn now. A simple way to look at the factors affecting the rate of interest is to look at what is called the loanable funds market. This is simply the market for loans in the economy. In this market, we have the demand for loanable funds coming from consumers and producers, for example, and we have the supply of loanable funds coming from, for instance, domestic and foreign savers. Changes to both the demand and supply curves of loanable funds can affect the real interest rate. The real interest rate being in effect the price of loans, in that it is the cost borne by borrowers when they borrow and it's the return to savers when they lend. Firstly, the supply of loanable funds. The supply of loanable funds could change depending on consumer and business sentiment, for example. If future economic conditions are uncertain, for example, due to the uncertainty around the future trading relationships between the UK and EU, then households and businesses may decide to save more for a rainy day. This increases the supply of loanable funds, like this, 
as people are incentivized to save more. To teres paribus, in other words, holding all of the variables constant, this would lead to a fall in the real rate of interest. The demand for loanable funds can also have an effect, and it can be driven by sentiment as well. If businesses are confident about new business opportunities, and if the wider market and regulatory environments are conducive to entrepreneurship and businesses starting up, then there may be an increase in the demand for loanable funds, like this. And this is as new entrepreneurs seek funding for their new business ideas. So Teres Paribus again, this would increase the real interest rate like this. Deficit spending is also a reason why the demand for loanable funds may change. If the government decides to spend more without increasing taxes, then it must borrow the difference by demanding loans in the loanable funds market. This increases the demand for loanable funds again, pushing up the real interest rate as before, again, if all of the variables are held constant. That's a critical assumption. Next, we have inflation. Inflation can also affect interest rates because the higher the inflation rate, the more the purchasing power of the money received by savers erodes over time. Please watch my video on inflation to learn more about this. Well, to compensate for this, lenders will demand higher interest rates to effectively balance this loss in earnings. Central bank intervention is also a factor determining interest rates. By using monetary policy to increase or decrease the supply of money in the economy, or by altering bank rates, which is the interest rate charged by the central bank on loans to commercial banks, central banks can affect changes in interest rates that percolate through the economy, impacting interest rates on loans, mortgages and other credit. Let's now calculate interest on savings. There are two main types of interest you should be aware of, simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest is when a saver earns a fixed sum every time period, that sum being a percentage of the original sum, in other words, the principal. Compound interest, on the other hand, is when interest is calculated on this original sum, the principal, and any accrued interest as well. Bearing that in mind, let's answer this question. So you invest $100 in a savings account that returns 5% simple interest per annum. Calculate the interest earned after five years. To answer this question, there is a formula you need to know. Total simple interest is equal to the principal, the starting sum, multiplied by the interest rate, multiplied by the number of time periods that the interest is calculated on. In this example, £100 is the principal, 5% is the interest rate, and the number of time periods this interest is calculated across is 5. Knowing these figures, we can just input them into this equation. $100 multiplied by 5% as a decimal, 0.05, multiplied by 5, gives us a simple interest of $25. Here's a question on compound interest. You take out a $10,000 loan at an interest of 5% that compounds annually. Calculate the interest you have to pay after three years. For compound interest, there's a slightly different equation. The interest accrued is equal to the principal multiplied by one plus the interest rate to the power of the number of time periods we're considering minus the principal again. In this case, the principal is $10,000. The interest rate is 5%. And the number of time periods we're considering is three because the loan compounds annually and we're looking at the interest you have to pay after three years. Again, we can just input these values into the equation. And the answer should be $1,576.25. We've reached the end of the video now. Here is a news article and accompanying questions relating to interest rates. Thank you very much for listening.